Well, oftentimes um, there is a there is a, a push from the Holy Spirit, like a coach. The Holy Spirit will push you because the Holy Spirit knows that there is something that you yourself have to make a decision to do to get something that he is planning to give to you. So it all matters on whether or not you're going to get focused enough to recognize I don't want my life to be delayed because of what I'm not doing. I don't want my delay to be on me. Inside of every seed that God ministers to you, inside of that seed is various things that are to bless you if you sow the seed. So let me give you an example. Say the Holy Spirit say, I want you to sow $500. I want you to sow $300. I want you to sow $200. Inside of that seed is not one or two or three things that the Father is going to bless you as a result of you sowing that seed. There is a whole plethora of prosperities and pleasures in that seed. So when you start sowing, I want you to recognize this. The power of God goes forth and starts to dismantle things that are planted in your life by the thief. Now, remember, we in the New Testament and the Lord is saying that the thief coming but to steal, kill and destroy. You notice the Lord not saying as a result of me coming, there's no longer a thief. So the thief still exists in the thief's ministry to destroy man, steal from man, and kill man. The blood did not take away the thief's presence. So the thief has things in everybody's life that is deposited. Okay, in the month of April, okay, in the month of June, okay, in the month of May, in the month of July, in the month of August. And oftentimes, people go year to year and not recognize what the thief has planted in a month. The thief cometh, what is the major objective, what is the priority? To steal from you. So, what is the major thing the thief wants to steal? Your destiny. Yes, the thief wants to steal your provision, but the thief wants to steal your destiny because your destiny is dealing with your soul, understanding its purpose. And then the next phase is deception because your, when your destiny is stolen from you, you actually don't agree that that was your destiny. So God created you to sing if your destiny of singing gets stolen from you, you actually will be angry at singing. You'll say, no, no, I'm not really supposed to sing. No, no, no. So the stealing deals with the psychological robbery of the mind. The mind is saying that it has turned away from this thing being a priority. The seed, when you sow it, there are people that are attached to the seed that are a part of your story. And you plant the power of God in their souls, in their pathway to connect with you. This woman that is a helper is in Adam's seed. God never mentioned this woman when he first made Adam. He never mentioned this woman on the first day that he's talking with Adam. Adam's seed sowing has this woman hidden inside of it that she would assist him and make his life a living heaven. So this woman is unveiled one day, but she was a result, a byproduct of the seed that Adam is sowing. The same way. 
Abram is sowing seed. All of Abram's investors, Abimelech was in his seed. So Abimelech's men and servants and all of the things that Abimelech transferred, the silver and the gold and the wealth that Abimelech transferred, it was all inside of the seed. It was encrypted in the seed. I hope that you really hear what I'm saying. Abram had a whole lifestyle of wealth transferences inside of the seed that he sowed. If he didn't sow the seed, he wasn't going to experience that, even though that was God's plan for him. People are not experiencing things, not because it's not God's will for them, but they haven't sowed the seed that God ministered to them to receive that as a harvest. Everything that man goes to God for in prayer is, 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 is a harvest. Lord, save my children. Harvest. Lord, deliver me. Harvest. Lord, protect me. Harvest. Lord, heal me. Harvest. Lord, give me strength. Harvest. All of these are harvests that people pray and petition God for. So Philippians 4, um, let your petition be made, unto known, uh, made known unto God with prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, make your request known unto God, rather. It's talking about letting your petition be made known unto God. But everything that you petition God for is in the realm of harvest. So what God does is minister to you seed so that you could receive the harvest of what you are desiring. So saints, what does it really mean when uh, Psalm 37, verse 4 and on, is saying, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Delighting yourself in the Lord means to find out what delights the Lord. What is delightful to him? Wow. I mean, it, it, it seems so simple, but when, when the light bulb turns on concerning this, it, it really opens up your eyes. Because what does God get delight in? What are all the perks? What are all the special things that he has revealed that he enjoys, that he loves? You know that he loves submission. Because the Bible says you got to submit yourself unto God in order to resist the devil. And then the devil flees from you. But you got to submit yourself to God. You know he loves humility. Humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God and he'll exalt you in due time. We see that in uh, the book of James, chapter 4. And we see that all through the New Testament as well. Talk about humbleness. We know that it is uh, the ability to forgive people, not hold grudges and hold bitterness against people and try to get revenge. Because the Bible tells you that if you have ought against anyone, even if you're about to sow, Fix that ought. Get it correct. And, and let me just tell you this. You know, man, man for ages have been so immature. If you have a problem with somebody, go talk to them. Don't go talk about them. And if you can't talk to them, there's a reason why you can't talk to them. So just leave it alone. I mean, it's just simple as that. I know when I started off in ministry, people couldn't access me, so then they started talking about me. But then you, you, you got actual receipts of them reaching out to you. You have receipts of them trying to befriend or, you know, friend you. You know, let's talk, you know, let's cheer. And then they get offended. But they don't know you protecting them because they're not really supposed to be connected to you. Well, why are they not supposed to be connected to you? If you got wisdom, because the, the exchange, the camaraderie, the connectivity between you and them is not going Bluetooth correct because they are on two different streams. Mentally, the person may be carnal. You might be mature here. It's going to bring conflict. It's just not a right Linking. Did you know that everybody on earth, you're not supposed to link with them? And people do carry bad spirits. 
And so when you connect with them, now you are coming into covenant with the altars that they are in covenant with. And if their altars are not good, now you experience all type of delays in your life. Let me show you something. So I often tell you this, but remember, this is really important. God is telling Balaam, who are these men around you? You notice what God is really dealing with. God is saying, I'm seeing people that you have connected with, but I don't know them. I'm seeing people that you are in conversation with. You all are talking casually. You feel comfortable around them, Balaam. But who are these men? I don't know them. I don't feel comfortable around them. Your goal is to keep the Holy Ghost comfortable with who you connect with. And if you connect with people and they are not creating comfort for the comforter, that's not a good look and that's not a good move for you in the spirit of God. The spirit, your life progresses based upon how much the Holy Spirit is pleased with your actions, with your relationships. That's how your life progresses. If the Holy Spirit is not enjoying who you pick to be around you, if the Holy Spirit is not enjoying your words, if the Holy Spirit is not enjoying your deeds, if the Holy Spirit is not en enjoying your pathway and your life decisions, your life will be stagnant. It, it'll, be, it'll be in stagnation. You, everybody's life moves based upon how well you are satisfying the preferences of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has preferences. He has things that he wants a certain way. And if you will lower your ego and your pride and you'll let those things go, it becomes even delightful for you to discover those things and demonstrate those things so that he can see it and keep on moving your life forward and forward. Everybody's life goes at the pace of the Holy Spirit being pleased with them. Now, I'm going to tell you like this here, and this is so important. It doesn't matter how good the Holy Spirit is to you. That don't mean that you're in a good place with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bless you and favor you, and you will be on your way to hell. Because you're not doing the same thing to him. Now, remember what David said. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my, life, my, my mouth. You notice what David is saying. I will bless the Lord at all times. What he's saying for the rest of my life. I'm going to bless him because I know he's been blessing me. That's the only way to get into heaven. That's the only way. You have to make sure that you are also returning back to the Holy Spirit, the kindness that he has shown you, the graciousness that he has shown you, the faithfulness that he has shown you. Proverbs 28 verse 20, the faithful man shall abound with blessings. See, while you are faithful to him, like he's been faithful to you, and this is one of the fruit of the spirit. One of the fruit of the spirit is faithfulness. So. You are constantly being placed in a time frame. Every day where you could bear fruit. Like, um, you know how today just went past. Today, there's fruit that was scheduled to be bore by you. You were supposed you was impregnated with opportunity, which is mercy today. You were supposed to bear certain fruits today. Tomorrow, you're supposed to bear certain fruits. Let me give you the mystery of days. That every day, God has scheduled certain fruits that you're supposed to bear. So there are themes sometimes to a day where the actual day, the theme is bear the fruit of joy. Some days the theme is bear the fruit of long suffering. And sometimes that theme continues for three weeks. Sometimes that theme continues for three months. Sometimes that theme continues for four months. 
And the theme is bear the fruit of long suffering, bear the fruit of patience. Oftentimes when people get into a situation where the theme is God is saying, I'm looking for a fruit to come out of you. They get offended and they fail the moment because they are still in love with the devil, which is the flesh. The fleshly mind is where the devil deposits which decision you should make in a moment. And so when you are given moments by God, they are uh, time frames where God is actually expecting and requiring, I want to see a fruit out of you, daughter. I want to see a fruit out of you, son. And if you are not in the spirit, that becomes offensive. Let me tell you what it means to be in the spirit and what it means to be in the flesh. When you are in the spirit, what God demands of you becomes your major trophy. It becomes your priority. It becomes your aim. It becomes your desire. It becomes your ambition. It becomes your inspiration, your influence. It becomes the drive within you. It becomes dedication. It becomes hunger and thirst. But when you are in the flesh, the things that the Lord want from you, they anger you. They upset you. You start to compare yourself to others and say, why, do it, why they don't got to go through that? Why they don't have to be instructed like that? Why, why God not talking to them like that? Why, uh, why, why they not going through that? Why they not experiencing this? When you're in the flesh, what the Holy Spirit is guiding you into becomes a stumbling block. When you are in the spirit, what the Holy Spirit is guiding you into, it becomes a fascination. People don't recognize that the Holy Spirit is a book as well. He is a book. So there are some people that when they see the Holy Spirit, they do this. And then there's some people that when they see the Holy Spirit, they say, and they study. They study to show their self approved. A workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And they're in love with the Holy Spirit and reading him and studying him. And letting his words enter their reactions and their activities. You decide whether or not you're going to read the book. Disinterest is evidence of sorcery, divination. Oftentimes people look at divination as a prophet that is lying on God or a prophet that is tapping into another spirit to prophesy. But divination in the book of Acts was revealed as a girl who was mocking Apostle Paul. So she was saying things that was correct, but she was incorrect. She was saying things that was of light, but she was in darkness. She was saying things that seemed gentle and harmless, but inside she was a ravenous wolf with destruction and wrong motive and wrong intention. So you got to understand the spirit of divination is when uh, Satan could uh, increase deceitfulness in your heart where inside inwardly uh, what what's going on inside is contradicting what's going on outside. So outside there is an approach of innocence, but inside there is a strategy of iniquity. Wrong dealings, wrong motives, wrong intents, wrong thoughts. This is how people get taken out of will of God also because divination is an inward uh, mindset and an atmosphere that you carry inside where you're really not even persuaded about what you're doing. You have no understanding of what you're doing. See, that girl with the divination, she's saying, oh, thou servant of God. But she doesn't even know what a servant of God is. She doesn't even have a revelation 
of the power that Apostle Paul has over that region. She doesn't even understand the power that Apostle Paul has over that city, over that land, even over her. And so divination is like, it's like it, it, it happens with a lot of religious people. They say the right thing, but they don't do the right thing. That's why if you talk to a religious person and you study a religious person for the next three months, you'll be confused. Because you're like, well, how are you saying this? But then if I go look at all the people that talk to you and you talk to them, this is completely different to what you just told me. You just told me about how you got to be separate from the world, but here you are, you're studying Cardi B. You're all in the world news. You know who divorced. You know who got married in the world. You know who is doing this and who is doing that. So what is really the content of the, con the, 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 the context of the content What are, what are you really saying? Because many, many times when you talk to people that have demons inside of them, they actually say the right things. That's why if you, if you can't see spirits, you're going to be very lost in this life because people are going to say the right things to you. Let me say this here. I want to say this and I'm going to leave this alone. Do you know why some people stay with the religion that they're serving? Do you know why they don't come to Jesus? Because demons are actually blessing them. And they can't see in the spirit world. So how do they know that it is wrong? They don't have no sight. They are blind. So people go to hell serving a false god. They make up a god in their head. They say, oh, this is my god. They end up in hell. But all throughout their life, there was events that looked like it was going favorable for them. They wanted the house, they got the house. Somebody actually lowered the price of the house. They got favor, the bank paid off the loan and then they had all type of approval and then somebody came in their life and blessed them and looked like things are working out good for them. Demons don't mind creating a covenant with you to bless you satanically as long as you remain blind. Remember, is the devil saying, uh, Jesus, I'm going to take you on this high place. I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world if you just bow down and worship me. So what is Satan really saying? Satan is saying, your life is going to go well. You're not going to have no pain, no suffering, no problems, no poverty, no, no issues financially. You're going to be good. You're going to have money. You're going to have provisions. You're going to have things working out for you. But bow down and worship me. So imagine if Satan does this with Jesus, who is the God that created all things. What about you? So what is the devil doing with you? What is the devil doing with billions of people on the earth right now? And how could people either even discern it? One of my daughters came to me she had an opportunity. Somebody was paying her an uh, amount of money. And they, they was paying. I'm going to show you this. Watch this here. They was paying her a, a certain amount of money and giving her certain benefits where she wasn't going to have to pay for her living arrangements. They was going to pay for it and then pay her in the month. And she came to me as a prophet to ask me whether or not to take the thing like uh, stuff like that. And uh, um, uh, is there a good plan? And here's how I deal with people because I, I have a mantle of wisdom that's, that's very ancient and eternal. I have an eternal wisdom mantle. My major expertise is wisdom. So in wisdom, 
we converse. That's why God is asking Cain, where is your brother? The question is not because God is stupid. The question is the activity of wisdom in vocabulary. So because the wisdom mantle is heavy on Jehovah God, he's asking Cain a question that points him to the wisdom that he rejected. So if you ever talk to a truly wise man, even their questions will reveal to you that you missed. Now you could take it how you want. Oh, I'm mad. Oh, 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 what you trying to say? Oh, oh, oh. You, you could get offended. But that's not a shocker because if you miss the wisdom in the question, that's not the first miss. You had missed the wisdom in the decision before the question had ever came. So you just continuing in missing wisdom is not the first miss, <laughs> you know, because the question in wisdom. But anyway, let me, let me, let me. Uh. <laughs> so I told my daughter, I said, uh, this person that you're talking to, they don't sound too nice, do they? Why are they so mean? I asked them a question like this. I said, why are they so mean? Remember divine favor. When God is firstly opening a door, if the door is ratchet off the jump, it's a sign of suspicion. It's a warning. If somebody is nasty and sarcastic to you at the beginning, it gets worse. If they could be sarcastic and boisterous in their speech in the beginning, it gets worse. So I asked her, why are they so mean? The question is to point suspicion. Let, let, me, let me share this with you. Do you know why my teachings are so powerful? You know why? Because it's God giving you interpretation to things. So let me show you something. So like if I start teaching you on, because um, I have a teaching that I'm about to do. I have different doctrines inside of me, like that the Spirit talks to me about, and sometimes... It's like the spirit is saying, like, we're going to talk about this in 2027. <laughs> we're going to talk about this in October. We're going to talk about this later on, like seal it up. But then there's downloads that the spirit of God talks to me and say, like, we're going to talk about this in 10 minutes. But see, when I talk about it, I'm not giving you a uh, introduction to something and telling you go find it out. I'm giving you the interpretation of what's already found. L let me say this to you. Who would you think had more power? The woman that is giving you the instructions to get to Chattanooga and telling you maybe there's traffic, maybe there's roads blocked off, maybe you'll get there through this route. I'm not really sure, but I hope that you make it. I, I heard that this is right. I heard several people told me. But then I heard some people tell me that it wasn't right, but I just hope that this is the way. Just let me know how it goes. Or the person that's in Chattanooga, and they call you and say, I have a flight right now already booked. I got the ticket, and uh, just get, make the flight. Don't miss the flight. 
the flight at this time. Make sure that you time correctly. Make the flight and I will bring you to this location when you land. Who has more power in the situation? So an apostle has already purchased a ticket to those underneath him. He's given them the interpretation so that they don't miss the flight. If people underneath the apostle have divination and demons and witchcraft spirits and Leviathan and they have all type of stuff going on inside of them, those spirits are not going to let them make the flight. Them spirits going to tell them all type of stuff. You know, you know, no, 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 this is not right. No, my, yeah, I, I, and because the spirits already know, Paul I know, Jesus I know, Prophet Joshua Holmes I know. So spirits in people's life, if they don't rid themselves of the covenants, those spirits become a dominant voice to change their choice to make the flight. So they never take flight. You see, I was saying in one of my videos about Pastor Paul, he said, Demas has left me. <laughs> Demas left because of demons. But imagine Demas had a flight that Apostle Paul was bringing him to in the heavenly realms. He never caught the flight because the demons that he remained in covenant with drove him away. They convinced him that there was something better. This is a real eye opener because when you really think about something like this, you say, ah, so if I have spirits in my life, even though God gives me the ministry of apostleship on the earth to, to give me that ascension, to give me that access into the heavenly realms, the glory realms, and I have access to those things, if I have not myself conquered, that means that these spirits will conquer me at one point. It may not be the first year, it may not be the second year, it may not be the third month, it may not be the fourth month. But if these spirits are there, why will they let me make the flight when I have permitted them to stay this long and they were supposed to be eradicated by my connection to the apostle? And see, people, when they're addicted to things, when they have bad habits in their life, whether it be gambling, whether it be smoking, whether it be uh, promiscuous activity, whether it be anything, at some point they use their money to fund their stronghold. Why, if somebody is a smoker, why do they spend so much money on cigarettes or vapes? Why do they spend so much money on this stuff? Because in the spirit world, when you spend money on something, you receive the continuance of that thing in your life. So people, they, they, if you want the word of God to continue in you, the word of God is the only thing that's going to keep you from sin. That's what 1 John 3, 9 is saying, that the seed of the word inside of you, it causes you to not even be able to sin no more. But people don't recognize, demons don't, let you sow money into the word of the Lord out of the man of the Lord 
that's been assigned to you because then that will be saying, I want the will of God, the plan of God, the power of God to continue. I want the spirit of the Lord to continue in me. I want the mindset and the accuracy and the righteousness of God to continue in me. And so the seed principle is really one choosing to receive the continuance of God's exact will for their life. So when somebody is sowing seed, they're saying, Lord, I, I want you to continue to unveil exactly who you want me to be, what you want to happen to me, what you want me to have. Imagine people that don't sow seed. Imagine people that are not consistent in sowing seed. Neither is the word of the Lord consistent in their life. If you look at anybody that's not consistently sowing seed, and you, if you go study them, they are a drifter. They are a wanderer. One time I was praying for somebody, and the Holy Spirit told me, this person is like a stray dog. This is what God is calling a person. He said, he said, they're like a stray dog. He said, son, you know what a stray dog is? If somebody gets the dog and they take care of the dog and they bless the dog, the dog going to run away. As soon as you take them off the leash, they are gone. As soon as you open up one of your doors in the backyard, they gone. As soon as you out in the public and, and you just turn your face one minute, they gone. You ever heard of dogs that run away from their owners? They was with their owner for like a year, five months, whatever. Their owner ain't doing them no wrong. The owner ain't beating them. The owner ain't doing them no wrong. But it's a stray dog. A stray dog does not embrace home. A stray dog is curious about the streets. A stray dog wants to explore what's going on in this neighborhood, what's going on in this city, what's going on in this avenue, what's going on on these streets, what's going on on this corner, what's going on on this boulevard. I want to know about all this other stuff. The dog is not in love with home. But see, the Holy Spirit tell me stuff like that because the interpretation of people allow you to know how to possibly intercede for them. Revelation about people's weakness is empowerment for intercession. It's very powerful what I'm saying, man. I'm saying some powerful stuff on here and you can hear me talk a lot throughout the years that you forget that I'm actually saying powerful stuff. These words are containing deliverance and mighty blessing to to unravel a new fold of power to revamp you in the chambers of God's glory to a new and perfect man in Christ. Let's think about this. So sowing seed is you accepting the continuance of the working of God in your heart. When you take money and you sow money in the spirit world, you are saying, I'm coming into a contract with you, O Lord, that I want you to disperse your intentions for me to protect me, to provide for me, to pleasure me, to prepare me, to empower me. I want those things. In the spirit world, when Job was sowing seed, Satan could not touch Job. That was the whole conversation. I can't touch him. There's a, there's a hedge around him. So every time Job was giving, he was actually making a transaction in the spirit world that demons did not have a right to violate his space. 
They didn't have a right to violate what he cared about. When you sow in seed, whatever you are, 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 are entrusted with, those things come underneath your protection. And Satan can't violate your ownership, your authority, your presence. Satan has to respect you. Hallelujah. 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 Satan has to respect your presence. Satan can't go past the landmark of what you have placed under the blood of Jesus as you have placed your faith in his kingdom of heaven system, which is a system of sowing seed and waiting on the time and reaping the harvest. And while you're operating in the flow of this system and, and this threefold cord of sowing, waiting and reaping, and you're in this threefold cord that's not easily broken, Satan has to respect the fact that you have respected God. Remember what Genesis chapter 4 is saying, that Abel, he sold. And when he sold, God respected his seed. And God respected Abel. Abel was doing an act of respect, sowing is a conduct of saluting God, respecting him as the commander and general of your path on earth. And when seed is leaving your hands on the earth, angel armies are attached to you. Angelic commanders, they move with you. Joshua was sowing seed and he could see the angelic commander and he was winning wars. He was operating in unusual strength. And the power of the Lord and the signs and wonders of the Lord was confirming itself everywhere Joshua went. And no man was able to stand against him. When you sow in, I'm going to tell you like this here. The Holy Spirit, his voice starts to lead you even when you're on the roads. You'll see a car accident before it happens. You'll sense a car accident. You'll discern a, 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 a fatal thing about to occur. Because seed sowing is, 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 is financial tongues. There's mysteries revealed to a person when they're honoring God with their finances. God will not betray you with ignorance. Wow. God will not betray you and let you be tricked. God will talk to you about people. God will talk to you about things. God will not let you be betrayed with ignorance. That's why if you ever meet somebody that is a seed sower, be careful how you handle them because they are prophetic even if they don't know that they're prophetic. God will make you prophetic without your knowledge. My goodness. My goodness, when you a seed sower, you'll become prophetic without your knowledge. You don't even know that you prophetic. You're not telling nobody, hey, I'm prophetic. But you became prophetic because you recognized that the Spirit of God was telling you to sow a certain amount of seed. You saw 318. And then you sowed 318. You're flowing in the word of knowledge for seed sowing. You receive the word of knowledge for seed sowing. And then God give you prophecy. God tell you this seed about to bring deliverance here. It's about to bring breakthrough right here. It's about to bring an open heavens right here. And that's prophecy right there. And the gifts of the spirit flowing in you to sow and to reap. And that prophetic anointing start resting on you for relationships and people that are around you. And you start to see them better. You start to understand them better. Your eyes open up as you honor God, as you 
take care of the Lord Jesus, as you bless the Lord Jesus, as you honor the Lord Jesus with your money, there is a reward and the reward is you become just like God.